It's a big pleasure to uh, to be sharing some of the work uh, we've been doing the past few years. This is a joint collaboration with uh, Camille Ponyard from the University of St. Paul and Philip Panda. I think this resonates quite a bit uh, with uh, what Dilson and Rio and Takashi have been speak speaking about. The main goal of this work is to um, is to try to predict how the synchronization properties depend on the network structure. I'll be straight away focusing on a, a model that's called diffus uh, diffusive model on a network, which is basically uh, put forward by uh, by Lou Pecora and then uh, just some more and lots of people have been doing uh, quite a bit of work on this. So the model basically depends on three quantities. That will be the local dynamics, uh, described by your favorite vector field, uh, the coupling function. So here we're using that's diffusive. This basically means that uh, the strength of coupling depends on difference of states and the graph structure. So uh, I'm thinking that uh, this overall coupling parameter here, alpha, is fixed, and uh, that uh, I'm only interested in uh, looking at uh, changes in this matrix AIJ. That's going to be the IJCC matrix. So this is a classical question in uh, this network uh, synchronization things, and people have been uh, taking uh, quite a bit of look at this. So for example, for undirected networks, on this matrix AIJ is symmetric. So people know, for example, that uh, if you increase the homogeneity, so if you increase the uh, homogeneity of degrees, you favor synchronization. In particular, uh, introducing random links usually uh, will favor synchronization. Uh, for, un for directed networks, so when this matrix is not symmetric, uh, the situation seems to be a bit more uh, interesting. For example, if you add a link, a single link, you can break synchronization. So this was uh, was observed in the context of a second order Kuramoto model, and the context of also of this um, this type of model. And uh, Dusan and Takashi they had uh, interesting uh, uh, results a few years ago that they 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 found that uh, for for example that feed forward networks they would be optimal. Let me say feed forward. This would be kind of a chain of master slave networks. So optimal in the sense that uh, they would synchronize for the um, maximal range of alpha. So here now I'm fixing a given particular alpha, and I'm asking uh, how only changes in the topology will affect the synchronization when I have no room to compensate for these changes over alpha. My, uh, my main example will be this, this network that we are having a look here. So on the top, so this network is actually uh, very generic. I mean, generic in the sense of graph theory. So in graph theory, you can classify a direct graph. Uh, it will be always of this type. It will be composed of uh, weakly connected components. Weakly connected components means the following. So that I have actually two networks here. So if I start from the uh, the right, I cannot access nodes from the uh, from the left. That that's this property makes the network weakly connected. So within now each sub network I'm strongly connected. I can access any other node. Uh, so I call this uh, configuration. So in physics, people call this configuration a master's blade configuration. Okay. So uh, from the topological perspective, this is not uh, this is not so brilliant because I mean basically information cannot flow from let's say node node four. There's no node here to node one. So what we can do. Uh, we can optimize the topology of net this network. So I only include a single link. And so here I, I maximize the topology. So now the network is uh, strongly connected. It used to be weakly connected. I optimize topology is strongly connected. So you can ask what will happen to the function of this network. So what it turns out that um, although this link is optimizing the structure of the network, it's bad for the synchronization. For example, here in the x-axis, I have time. Here's difference of state between node uh, 1 and 5. When I start my simulation, so I'm running uh, uh, with holes, neurons, they synchronize. When I do these uh, structural uh, improvements, they desynchronize. This is not only uh, the ring marsh holes model. This also will happen in lots of models. For example, for the Lawrence, for the Hosler, also for the Lawrence. 
So they start synchronizing. When I add the link, they will desynchronize. So when we first, uh, when we first found this, we start chatting to people. The first thing they thought, uh, they said, uh, this is happening because I'm reinforcing the hub. So basically, it would be, uh, I'm linking this to the hub. So we tried to prove this. We didn't manage, but we didn't like scale simulation. We, we found that this is not the case. You can have networks with the hubs. You're trying to reinforce the hub. This does not happen. So then some other people, they also said, oh, this is happening because you broke the master slave uh, synchronization, the master slave structure. Because maybe there's an idea that master slaves, they would be optimal. Okay, so then we start uh, doing some more simulations. We thought that the uh, master slave, uh, this, this uh, breaking of synchrony has nothing to do with breaking master slave. For example, um, um, okay, so here's one example where, um, now I had this network in a regime that would not synchronize, and then when I add the uh, the link, when I break the uh, the master slave uh, structure, then it, now it starts to synchronize. So it has some to, something to do with the links, the way you break this uh, this master slave structure that we did not understand. So we start doing some uh, some mathematics, and to this I need uh, three assumptions before I can uh, reach conclusions. Uh, but basically, this first assumption is an assumption on, on the vector fields, basically saying that the vector field has an attractor and F is smooth enough. This is basically is what it's saying. For example, this will, will, be, will work for the, for the Lorentz oscillator. So the second assumption is saying that um, I can differentiate uh, this function H and they have control over the spectrum of H. So basically it says that the derivative of H, the synchronization manifold is worth it. This would be the case, for example, for the Kuramoto model. The third, uh, the third assumption is assumption on the graph. So it's a very mild assumption. So it's saying that so the graph has a diverging spanning tree. If this graph has not a diverging spanning tree, it makes no sense to study this problem because you could split the graph into two disjoint graphs. So it's, it's very mild. So under these, uh, these assumptions, uh, we can uh, conclude the following uh, results. Actually, I will not state the precise results. I don't want to bother you with the details. If you want to see the details, please have a look at this uh, archive uh, submission. But uh, I'll do some informal statements. So the uh, first uh, statement, that which is kind of trivial, to be honest, is the following. So if you uh, enforce the driving, so if you make the, 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 the master to drive the, uh, the slave stronger, you only facilitate synchrony. You will not break synchrony, for example. The second uh, conclusion that we got is the following. So uh, generic master-slave uh, networks, they are not optimal for synchrony. For any uh, weakly connected network, you can always break the uh, master-slave configuration such a way that uh, after the network becomes strongly connected, synchrony will improve. And uh, what the result says, the following, so if the connectivity of the, uh, uh, the slave is poor, so if we say it's very easy, it's very easy to break the, uh, the, the master slave into two, then can uh, improve synchrony by, by adding a single link. And by the way, we can say what's the single link, for example. And then uh, the third result, the following. So uh, you can also break the master slave configuration in a way that you can hinder synchrony. As I said, so it's, it's very easy to break the master slave configuration such that to improve synchrony is very hard to break the master slave configuration such that you hinder synchrony. In particular, there is a spectral condition, so a condition that we don't quite understand, but it, it pops up in, in, in the equations of the following. You can only break the master-slave synchronization um, configuration by destroying synchronization when the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the slave network must be way more poorly connected than the master network. So this is a bit known, uh, we don't really understand because basically you're trying to study spectral properties of the slave, but then you have to study spectral properties of the master. So this only says that there are some nonlinear mechanisms of, uh, of this uh, Laplacian eigenvalues that will mess up this, no, this linear behavior. Anyway, 
So let me tell you uh, how we can uh, prove this idea, um, this result. Actually, we only need uh, three ingredients, which is uh, fairly well known. So the first one is transition to synchronization. Basically, is doing some uh, master stability function analysis. The second one, so most of this approach will be uh, the idea we control uh, derivatives of eigenvalues. So we, I need these eigenvalues to be simple. This is a non-trivial step. I'll uh, discuss about this. And finally, uh, we are able to, after some computations, we are able to boil down the whole analysis to uh, analysis of a bilinear form. So uh, we had this result a few years ago that saying uh, under these three assumptions, basically uh, we have a single critical alpha that depends on the uh, network, on, on the coupling function and F, such that if you cross this uh, critical alpha, the network is synchronized. So in the talk, in the talk of Rio and Adilson, you had two critical alphas, so here I have only one. Uh, this is not a problem. So the uh, second one is being very large. The main idea here is the following, uh, that's uh, when you include the link, you have a spectral motion of the Laplacian eigenvalues to the wrong direction. So here I would have the network without modification. After increase, the, the strength is positive, but the network, the, the, the eigenvalue moves to the wrong direction. Some network eigenvalue. And so this is non-trivial, actually. It's, it's not easy to get these uh, eigenvalues moving to the wrong direction. For example, you can prove a theorem that this will never be the case for direct networks. So if you include a graph, if, if you include a link, this will be a subgraph, and this coupling function will, it will be decreasing, so it's impossible to break synchrony. So it's really, this phenomena really uh, uh, lives in the helm of uh, directed graphs, the phenomena I was uh, describing. And the main analysis, again, is to, is to boil, it will boil to um, so the idea of master stability function and spectral perturbations. So to do this uh, spectral perturbation, so basically I want to prove that say, if I add a link, then my critical alpha will increase a lot. So what I need to do, I need to uh, avoid the situation that Takashi just spoke about, is that uh, the eigenvalues, they could be uh, non-analytic functions of the perturbation. Basically, this is the problem. So I want them to be analytic functions of the perturbation, or are, otherwise I cannot control the motion. So the first problem we face is the following. If you give me a graph, uh, I cannot say anything about this, uh, the spectra of this graph. So the idea then is to uh, include weights in the graph, and then we keep the topology while you're changing weights. So the idea is that I'll keep the topology of the, the network, but I will change the weights. If I do this, I can prove the following theorem, uh, that uh, this set of graphs with simple spectrum, uh, they will have a full measure. I will have simple spectrum only changing weight. So this means that if you give me a graph, I can tell you how to change weight, and I have simple spectrum. Once I have simple spectrum, I can study um, the synchronization properties. So I start with this plus. So you see here's the matter's layer. I do a structural change. And this basically boils down after some uh, computation that you have to study this bilinear form. And uh, this bilinear form is non-trivial because he will you see here no linearities pop in. Uh, this will depend on the you, this depend on the um, on the left and right eigenvectors of the slave network. It also depends on the Laplacian of the uh, master network. So basically, um, basically what you're trying to do is this. So you want to to get um, negative derivative to hinder synchronization and positive derivative to uh, improve synchronization. So this will boil down to studying uh, spectral properties of this slave and the master simultaneously. So my, um, my take home message is the following, sometimes more can be less as we, uh, as we saw here. So this is actually quite generic when you try to break the uh, master slave configuration. We now, after these long formulas, we have a way to, to predict the impact of the links and tell which links and what's the topological properties that will be involved with this uh, breaking of synchrony. And I spoke about uh, weakly connected graphs. For strongly connected graphs, this is, a, this is an open problem. So we have no idea 
how to do it. Um, this is a very complicated problem, as you all know. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure to speak here.